Thanks a lot, Jean-Claude. Uh, now I have to reach to the high standard of that presentation I gave and convince you that we're on the right path. Uh, okay, let's see if this works. So the title of my talk is Open Air from Pilot to Service, and then I'll show you how, where we were when we convinced Jean-Claude and the others to go with this and when we're going right now. Okay, two years ago we launched uh, Open Air uh, in the presence of uh, Vice President Neely Cruz in Ghent. And uh, I gave the presentation of the project right before the launch. And this was, these flowers are wonderful, but they're blocking my view, so I'll, uh, I'll be doing things like this. Uh, so, um, or maybe I can come this way. Uh, this was the slide at the time, the first slide of my presentation. Open Air makes open access a reality for research publications. Open Air implements the open access pilot for FP7 in FP7 of the European Commission. And Open Air addresses projects with special clause 39 in the grant agreement. That's where we started. And I want to focus on a few uh, terms in that slide. Open access pilot in FP7, research publications, and uh, uh, European Commission and Clause 39. So where all these have changed in where we are now and in the direction that we are taking. First of all, the title of my talk says, From Pilot to Services. And now we are offering, let's say, industrial strength. Uh, and and I, I, I use the term uh, uh, with full knowledge of what it means. And I'll show you some evidence afterwards. Uh, open access, uh, uh, there are services for open access and people can depend on them. Uh, we are ready to move uh, from FP7 to Horizon 2020 and all the open access requirements that this program will give us. Uh, special clause, whatever number it will be, uh, uh, we are ready to serve that. And we are moving away, not away, uh, we are moving uh, next door also to the European Commission and we are ready to accept and serve similar needs, not just for FP7, but other funding programs, either at the European Commission level uh, and, and European level or at national level. And, and we have done some uh, initiatives on that. We are still, the, still the term that is highlighted there is research publications, but not in the traditional sense that has come down to us through the centuries of writing a paper publishing it typically in a journal uh, or maybe in a conference proceedings for some disciplines, but a generalized form of research publications. Because now in the modern way of uh, doing research and communicating your scientific and scholarly results, the publication is one thing, the data sets that you produce is another thing, uh, talks that you give, the software that you use, the protocols that you follow, all these are things that are publishable and show the kind of research that you did. So this is the more generalized form of research publications. And of course, we started from some open access repositories at the time. Now we have an ever expanding open air set of repositories, network of repositories that we're building. So that's where we are right now. That's where we moved in two years time. And I'll show you some results. The thing is that when open access started three or four years ago, it was a term that people have been talking about for 10 years since the Berlin Declaration, Budapest, and so on, but still it was new in many years. Now it's spreading everywhere. Everybody wants to be open access. Well, not everybody, okay, some publishers don't. But in any case, this is the trend, and we'll see where it will get us. Uh, modern science. Research is a globalizing. Uh, undertaking, so it is becoming more global, it's not there yet, but the support structures that are to support this kind of, uh, to help and facilitate this kind of effort, need to be done at the local level, at the institution, uh, at, the, uh, at the nation, at within a theme, local, not just geographically, but also thematically often. And the challenge is to get all these local things, these local activities, local results, and bring them all together to support 
the global or the globalizing type of research. And currently we're in a transient period. We are ready uh, uh, to move from the ways of the past, the ways we're used to be doing things, to the new ways. And how to do that, we don't know. Uh, the, the, the society, uh, uh, the scientific community doesn't know. And Open Air comes right at that point to help this process, to understand together with the stakeholders what is required to be done and do it. Open Air is a research infrastructure project and in fact, it's a research infrastructure in three dimensions. Uh, human, content, and technology. And it's doing this true to the previous slide, starting from local things and providing a participatory philosophy in achieving all the services. Whatever is being developed by others, we take advantage of, we build upon, we don't rebuild, we don't spend again money to do the same things, just grabbing what is already there to come up with something that is value added. And in doing that, we end up having an effort that is really multifaceted at many levels. And it's, uh, 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 I, it's not just multi, but it's also inter. Sometimes you bring all this together, sometimes you have to interact with others. So multi or international, lingual, disciplinary, cultural, meaning uh, scientific culture, organizational, and so on. In order to, to, for open air to achieve what it needs, it has to per operate in, multi -facets, in, in multiple facets. And by bringing together the consortium that we have so far, we have managed to, um, to do this. Um, with respect to the human infrastructure, from where we started, Open Air broadens its engagement with the research community. It has national open access uh, desks in every single member, uh, na uh, mem a nation member of the European Commission and beyond. But not only that, it interacts with many other uh, entities that have interest in this. It encourages researchers to deposit their results publications and all in institutional or thematic repositories and putting access uh, and putting them in open access um, uh, places. All the videos that you saw, all people were saying, oh, we want open access, we want to find things as a result. I'm not sure if whoever was taking the, the interview from them asked them, but do you deposit your stuff in open access repositories? This is always a challenge and our network of open access desks is facing this challenge with, with many tools. And the speaker that comes right after me will say about nodes a lot more uh, in, in, in detail, maybe. Uh, um, and uh, we collaborate with many scientific organizations and initiatives in order to do this. Our effort is not done in a vacuum. As I said, it's participatory. Whatever others have done that helps our purpose, we interact, we collaborate with them, and we bring the results. This is our structure, 27 um, uh, uh, member states plus a few other nations uh, within Europe, but also going even, even beyond. Uh, collaborations with many, many, many other initiatives, organizations that have to support us. I won't go down through the list. Eurocris for current research information systems, it's a, it's a big uh, issue, our collaboration with them. ORCID for coming up with uh, standard identifiers for researchers and so on. This is not a pilot anymore. It's a true service. And uh, yes, 24 hours is not enough, but that's what it takes to offer in a multidisciplinary level, at the European at least level, the services that, that, uh, that we have to deal with. Moving away from human infrastructure, let's go to the content infrastructure. Open Air broadens its, co its scope. It started with a traditional uh, research publication concept and it moves away and deals with all kinds of research outcomes. Not the, co the content itself, but the data, the metadata that it needs in order to combine and link and analyze and, and, and cluster and come up with higher level information 
and useful knowledge uh, uh, for, for research. Currently we have 6.5 million. You'll see two or three numbers in our various talks. It depends on when we got the number, but it's above 6 million, 6.2, 6.3, 6.5. In any case, soon it will be seven, so this m number, would, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. And we interact with funding agencies, not just the Commission, but also uh, across Europe. And although every institution and every sci uh, scientific discipline wants to offer uh, a repository for their constituents, there are some that don't have a natural place to put the research results, their publications or the data and so on, we offer that as well. We call it for orphans. They're not orphans, they're homeless. Not the people, but the research result. So we have a way to store what doesn't have a natural place to, to go to. Uh, I mentioned this new concept of a research publication. What, what is this? Well, um, if you go and look at a research question. Typically this results in a publication and that's what we've been talking about. But this is not produced in a vacuum. It has lots of things within the publication, the data it used, the license it has uh, with it, other publications it cites or doesn't cite but alludes to and so on. But of course we have the research data it used or it produced. And it comes with its, its baggage, the workflow it produced it, the particular experiment, and so on. And of course, usually this is paid by someone. Who paid it? How much they paid? Under what, con uh, under what program? All this and a lot of other things that are not in this picture constitute the new form of publication. Some of it can be considered as a publication on its own, just a data set. The research data set can be considered a publication. Data sets, uh, text, and so on, with everything else is necessary for someone to understand the kind of research that was done based on the requirements of modern day science. We need to, no, we don't need that. We need the red button, okay. All this to capture the concept in the way more and more scientists consider what their scientific result is about. And, um, our current services and our services under development move in this direction. No, now I have to put this. Um, some glimpses of things already happening. This is a biology uh, paper. And here in the red, which I'm sure you can read in the back, uh, it says uh, the data set that I produce has been deposited in GenBank and the accession number is this, okay? Already data and text go together and that's, and that's a link. And if you go and you look at how uh, GenBank uh, uh, shows this, it has uh, uh, EBI, okay, uh, that takes the data from GenBank. It has a particular way of inter and, and showing the publication and here are the accession numbers of, of, of the elements in GenBank. If we look at a different uh, uh, social sciences, similar, similar way, a publication and various data related links, external database links that uh, they uh, need to show next to the textual publication. What is the right concept of this new research publication? We are working with stakeholders, with different disciplines, with dance, with EBI uh, and so on coming from disciplines to understand the commonalities in this new research publication and the idiosyncrasies of every discipline in order to be able to support it. And we have some services in this direction and more are to come. This is the future of research results and we are there to take advantage of what is produced and, and bring it to the researcher. Third infrastructure technology. Open Air broadens its scholarly communication services. Uh, Open Air is a platform. You can take it and install it at home and do it with your publications, home being your institution, your lab, your country, your continent, at whatever level you want uh, to achieve this. Uh, and it, it does not provide, for the most part, 
first level services, but it, con it aggregates, it integrates, and then offers things on top. For many of the things that I mentioned, and uh, let's look at the picture. This is the fancy picture of, of the presentation. Underneath we have the data that others produce. Uh, the 6.5 million publications in different kinds of repositories, institutional, thematic, open access, closed access, uh, uh, halfway open, whatever, three systems and funding, uh, funding databases. We are probably the only European project that has access to European Commission databases, okay? And, and that's a big achievement. Um, uh, lots of interactions with colleagues at the European Commission to achieve this. Uh, and now we're going to national funding agencies. And we are trying to, uh, we, are, we are working on, on that as well. And many initiatives, as I said, lots of databases there. And then data repositories. Not to have to deal with the data, the data is taken care of by others, but grabbing metadata to link EU DAT, data site, and so on. And this exists uh, without us, and then comes the open air hub, uh, for lack of a better term, offering registries of all these things, the CERN system that offers a home to the homeless, uh, huge machinery to analyze all this, to aggregate, to clean, to interact, to link, to come up with trends, and so on. Uh, get rid of duplicates, realize who, um, which of the 10,000 Yanis Ioannidis, let's say, uh, is the one who wrote this paper, and so on. And all that, we offer a bunch of services, but we know there are many others who want to offer services on top of our data. So we offer application programmatic interfaces to third parties to come up with their own services as well. And then we have our own. Uh, help desk, deposition. It's easy to deposit stuff to us. Please come. Don't be afraid. Lots of visualization and management of this new form of publication. Okay, search and browse. Curation and collaboration. Uh, linking content, coming up with statistics, all these services. This is the added value that we offer on top of data that others have. A lot of um, effort is going on there by bringing it all together is the, catal the catalyzation that um, uh, open air brings to the research life cycle. And of course, um, uh, Norbert alluded to that a little bit with his showing of the books. Uh, we don't just offer software and technologies and networking through this process by looking at requirements top down and looking at what people are doing bottom up, we come up with guidelines. And people, little by little, not just on repositories, for publications, for finding information, and now recently for data providers, for the needs of open air. You cannot tell the, the, the astronomer how to deal with their data, but how to store in order to participate in this higher level um, aggregated uh, uh, environment, some things may be uh, needed to be done in a particular way. By issuing guidelines after studying the needs, uh, standardization happens in a de facto way, not in the Euris way, but a de facto way. And we've seen tremendous results in the publication world, and little by little possibly in others. This is a 24 times seven uh, service that is operational since 2010. I should say, I think I mentioned in another slide, in these two years, uh, it has been zero second of unscheduled downtime. The system has not crashed. We brought it down twice because we had to and it was scheduled and pre-announced. Pre it hasn't crashed. Don't ask me how. Certainly, I haven't uh, programmed any part of it. That's part of the reason why it hasn't crashed. But it is a service that you can depend on. And it, 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 it's not just a piece of software that you build. 
it has to interact, as I mentioned, with so many other services, and that's, and that's a big challenge. Um, lots of people behind it. It's a team of more than 15 people working full-time in maintaining and developing the services, plus um, uh, administrators. And for those of you who like to see underneath the seats, we have over 350,000 lines of code. This is scary, uh, but it works. And uh, okay, uh, the software is there, and we use it for the open air infrastructure. As I mentioned though, it's something that you can take and put in other places, and we have done that. Sometimes on our initiative, we participate in another project, we being some members of the consortium. We see a similar need, we take it, we tell the others, they love it, we use it. But often others come to us and say, we see that you do this, we might need something very similar there, can you give it to us? And so we see a lot of national initiatives, Spain, Recollecta, Poland, and so on, and even across the pond, Argentina uh, will probably be installing this for their own open air. Actually, it should be open air la, Latin America, because E in open air is Europe. Um, and in other uh, infrastructure projects, uh, both at the Europeana uh, uh, content providers and others, and also organizations that want to use our services for statistics collections. Uh, we offer lots of services for lots of kind of stakeholders, tools for research managers to evaluate open access, how much open access we have, what is the impact of open access, statistics on the scientific product of uh, um, a research uh, administrator in a, in a, in a university, uh, tools for project coordinators. If you get your data in open air and then you go to Cordis, uh, you get your publications automatically. You don't have to add it twice. And this is very good and very important in terms of the interaction between the Commission and, and what we offer. Um, one thing about data analysis, uh, for more things about research administrators, okay, we fund all these projects, we, Royal We, the funding agencies. Uh, the publications that come out of, how many are in what topics? What is the hot topic? Uh, we are working on analysis. This is not a graph that we have produced, but soon we'll be producing better graphs. This is an NIH graph on trying to uh, categorize uh, publications in various areas. And when we have this, and we are, let's say, halfway, in, in, uh, 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 we've done half of the way, you'll be able to see what is the impact what our researchers are producing on, what has been funded a lot and has produced little uh, scientific results, little, few, I should say. What has been funded not so much, but it produces a lot. Where is the need? Lots of visualization services, uh, data analytic services tailored to the needs of the research life cycle of the new kinds of publications. User statistics, how many repositories, how many publications, how much of it is open access. Uh, open access appears not just in repositories, but in open access journals. Can we be the infrastructure where open access journals can be built upon? This is another um, uh, way, another target that uh, we may be offering to the research community. By analyzing, harvesting and analyzing publications, we have identified about 45 43,000 FP7 publications from about 8,000 projects. Nobody went and did this. We did it with our tools and with our services and harvesting our repositories, thematic repositories, um, uh, and, and uh, repositories like a, a further aggregating repositories around the world. US repositories, European, and so on. Just looking at the number, you get an immediate sense for part of what you have achieved as a funding agency or as a research administrator. About 40% is open access. This means that open access is catching up. Two years ago, I, I'm not sure what the number would have been, but, but, it's, but it's catching up. 
I mentioned in passing many of the beneficiaries of open air, researchers and project coordinators, managers, industry, particularly SMEs who, who don't have access necessarily, who don't have a research branch and who don't produce research but want to take advantage of the research. The citizen scientists, let's not forget that a lot of our fellow citizens have the scientists in them and they look and, and they come up with results that the real scientists, whatever real means, uh, have not seen. Having open access uh, established upon the research results opens a new world to them. Funding agencies, scientific initiatives I mentioned, repository managers, and policy makers. Open air. It started from publications, which is a form of data, and organizing all this data. Typically, people talk about you have data, and then you put data in context, and this gives you information. And then if you take information, you make it actionable, you get knowledge. Usually it stops there. Of course, humanity, for many thousands of years, uh, its target is wisdom. From knowledge to come wisdom. And our conference, though, talks about enlightenment in the knowledge society. So I guess after wisdom, then you get enlightened. The goal is to reach this enlightenment. And open air is the tool to come to bring, to reach enlightenment in the knowledge society. This is our way, this is our goal within the scientific realm. We have reached the points that I kind of gave you a few glimpses in, in this presentation. We are the turning point, both of our services and of our penetration into the research communities through the National Object Access, uh, Open Access Desks. And we're at the point of a big new campaign to advertise the service that we've achieved so far and to get a lot more people to take advantage of these services, but also to feed these services with their publications and their data sets in their own repositories or other infrastructures that are there for us to harvest and create this cohesive world. We're glad that you are here with us in our journey towards the real open air. Thank you.